Etie for yamamuni akwa ba eba melodies podcast YouTube channel so na men's good in same no um na nkro for eka se etu etwa sisi but um information na me won no em say afianza men's good ye she in same na se kra tres in same na nya end ye kra nya end ye etie for expert eba eke kake ka eye men's good in same no omo tre tre yen in sema ewe ni so ansa ne betu as me say subscribe na click notification bell no so me san so a tre se nia um we be ye no me san so a tre se nia be subscribe na wa click uh, and then the down screen so you see and Mr. Um, you know, pe 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 am I in? Now, um, see here, I say ma, I ban it say, a Dr. Richmond, a two a hini, um, yes, in Grofu Bebri, in him no, or your lecturer, a wo, a ye Ghana Banking College, or some so ye CEO of Universal Capital Management, or sha, or you be a own nim, a ye, a sikasemu, and a institution, at say, and a investment institution, so ha, san ye say a canon, or you be a own nim, Sanya manim na uh, wapa out abe explain you wama deep secret of a uh, year men's gold on your operations no senior na omu operating in yama uh, wachen again ama a uh, year deep secret na na or kasa e wo news file so uh, on this something uh mse aye nini mse ni dino no it's here for internet yes uh young corner young co tier in some more kind or tier for young con co tier in some more kind a far a year men's good in an appear men's that is there's a model so far. Well um thank you. Um first of all let me um sympathize with uh, the investors, uh, the victims of uh, men's good. Um if you listen to some of the stories it's really uh, heart rich and um, it's, it's heartbroken. I mean, after your hard earned uh, funds, uh, expecting to make some uh, yield uh, to help yourself, if it ends up bad like that, it's really heartbroken. Right. Um, but I mean, I also want to say that as a people, um, we have to uh, be a bit more. Uh, careful, particularly when we are entering into any uh, business venture, we have to take time to do a more uh, due diligence uh, to making sure that whatever uh, promise of interest uh, that uh, an investor or an agency promises you is coming from a credible source. Uh, just because an investor, uh, an agency says that uh, he's paying you so much. <clears throat> sometimes sound too big to be true mm. i mean the fact that it's too good to be true that is it it means that it's so, likely that it may not come so so to, so, so yes. to what i say sticks out for me right can you design the module yes that, so the model that they take money from you and yeah. they give you as much as 10 percent or sometimes even more i mean uh to tell you the truth currently i mean across the globe if it's any scheme really that promises to pay you an interest of 10% per month, that model, I can comfortab uh, comfortably say that is a Ponzi scheme, which is way above the market average. 10% running into 120% annually. I'm just wondering what kind of investment that such uh, an agency would do to make that returns. And therefore, when you look at the, the scheme, I mean, nobody, I mean, there was enough red flags to pinpoint that this is indeed a Ponzi scheme. I mean, if you look at the history of Ponzi scheme, uh, right from 1920 when Charles Ponzi started, even before that we have Sarah Ho House, who started in 1879, thereabout, you can see that they all share similar characteristics. And these characteristics often they begin with some initial investment, and that investment, uh, they entice people to invest in their commodities or securities and promises huge returns. Now, that returns, when you buy into it, they use your money that they have collected to entice further people because they'll pay you juicy interest that will attract more people. Now, as more and more people join, they use the initial investment that they have gathered to pay returns for the new entrants. So it is not as if they have made any sales that they have made a return, but they are just uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul. And so they are using the same investment that 
people that already made to pay newcomers and that will continually actually entice more and more people to come but now let's look at this particular model this model was using gold right people were made to go presumably. to presumably presumably gold. yes people were made to go to buy gold and then deposit the gold and get what they call the extra value now something you know gold gold is a billion okay gold is like uh, a kind of medium of exchange or medium of payments and therefore gold itself does not yield interest <coughs> neither does it pay dividend the only way you can get any returns from gold is true sales. so the sales value which you make some returns either capital gain or you can make capital loss because the price of gold fluctuates i mean very much and so if any agency promises you a stable and consistent return from dealing in gold i do not know where that returns is going to come from because the only way you can make yield is when you sell the gold and gold prices do not go up consistently it goes down and comes down and therefore there's no way you can be guaranteed a consistent and stable returns from gold and more so if you have been promised 10 percent uh, uh, per uh, uh, monthly and therefore people sh- should have known that this really there's enough red flag that the, 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 it was clearly written on the wall that this is a kind of Ponzi scheme. Of course, uh, people were enticed by the returns, but for us, uh, portfolio theory will will tell you, I mean, anything that would give you high yield is often associated with high risk. Uh, I mean, risk, which is the uncertainty that you get the expected returns. So if they promise you higher expected returns, you should know that the risk associated with it is high. Okay. And therefore, that can easily happen. So I, I think that the one, people should have known that this is too good to be true. And then two, the institutions itself, that is the, the, the regulator. I think uh, the regulator, well, has acted, which is for me, it is good. But it could have acted just, much. Just, just, just hold yeah. on because we'll deal with the regulatory right. aspect and. We'll deal with the regulatory aspect and ask the question whether or not there has been either what some say is regulatory inertia or right. what others cl- say uh, by bluntly is regulatory, regulatory failure. Right. Um, but I want to bring Ace on at this point. And Ace, I want you to help us understand how you understand the outcome of the matter that they had put before the court and which was dismissed uh, this week. Because when things went bad and some of the customers went seeking refund of their principals, more particularly, they were told that because they had the suit in court, they were unable to proceed to make any payments uh, until the suit has been determined. Now, clearly, it appears it has been determined. But h- help us understand what, what happened. Well, it, the, 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 the action was dismissed on a technical ground. Okay. Um, you, you might recall that I, I, was, I was involved in the HFC matter where the Supreme Court reemphasized that if the law provides a procedure for ven- ventilating your grievance you stick to that procedure now the defendants in this case were the bank of ghana and the sec the securities and exchange commission right the uh, the bank of ghana Act says that if you're challenging the exercise of the bank's powers under the act you go for mandatory arbitration. Right. As distinct, I mean, there's voluntary arbitration where right. the parties voluntarily agree to submit their dispute to an arbitrator. But if it's a dispute involving Bank of Ghana in the exercise of its regulatory powers, you go for what is called a mandatory arbitration. You have no option. You have no choice. You cannot file a writ in court. You must go for arbitration. And an arbitral award is, to all intents, it's almost like a judgment. Once the arbitrators give the award, and you register the award in the court. You can enforce the arbitral award. And so it is possible that they, could, they can go for arbitration and Bank of Ghana will lose. 
Okay. Then there's an arbitral award that binds Bank of Ghana, and once it's registered in the courts by a simple, pres- uh, you know, by a very simple process, it it carries the weight of a judgment of a high court, and it's enforced as such. You can't appeal against an arbitral award. Okay. And so there's mandatory arbitration. And also, if your reliefs 